Excellent. Welcome to TAD Summit Innovators. We've got Mike Cairns here, uh, who uh, did an amazing hack at TADAC Open this year, Lonely Bot. We'll get into that in a minute. We have, of course, Brian from SignalWire, who was the technology that uh, Mike built upon uh, for Lonely Bot. And in the background there is Johnny picking up his daughter from school. So, Mike, please introduce yourself and your hack and what drove you in terms of creating this uh, hack for TADAC Open. Uh, is it okay if I share a slide? Of course, absolutely. We're flexible. You can do it anyway. There you go. Perfect. So can you see on the screen? Yeah, right. we can. So, Excellent. <laughs> all right, great. So um, basically, I just wanted to start by explaining who I am. You know, My name is Mike Carnes, and uh, I've been doing technology for a long time. Uh, I've been... Uh, a long-term Enterprise Connect attendee, even when it, back when it was VoiceCon, and I've uh, I participate in TADHack at least once a year. I, I know you have a couple of different sessions a year, and I, I try to try to make it at least one. And I've kind of made it a a family tradition in my household. Uh, I've had my kids involved. Uh, I've had my son once. Uh, yeah. He helped help with one. My son Elias did one. Uh, we built. A few other bots that I've done in the past are Fitbot, the COVID nineteen classroom helper, yeah, uh, and these other ones, kind of kind of ones that I I shared. Um, but this I year, actually, I, sorry, just sorry for inter in yeah. interrupting, but the COVID nineteen classroom helper, I it, it's one of those where I was watching it and it just made me realize what a vastly different world we are in today compared to back then. Yeah, it's it's a great sort of you know, touch point in realizing wow. It really was tough back then. But anyway, sorry for interrupting, Mike. Yeah, during that time, uh, d during that one, uh, on that topic, it was, I had a kindergartner, a middle schooler, and a high schooler all at the same time, Ooh. trying to try to manage those three different uh, school schedules. That was rough. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, and so um, the problem I tackled for this one, I, I thought, you know, what's what's a problem that's close to home for me? Um, loneliness. And, uh, you know, my dad is uh, retired and uh, he's he lives alone in Kansas, which is, you know, very far from where I am in Texas. Yeah. Um, and so my, my thought was, OK, what can I do to help with loneliness in the elderly? Mm -hmm. So I thought, OK, let's let's try and build a, a bot using the generative AI to uh, combat loneliness in the elderly. So that was my my premise for for my my hack, um, and I built it on SignalWire. So I called it LonelyBot, and cool. uh, yeah, that's that's all I was going to share. Um, okay. And then I could share. Oh, yeah. Maybe Stop you could share the architecture because you know we're geeks here. It, it's nice yeah. to show what you built. Let me go grab that. Because I can see it on the left-hand side there. Oh, uh, this is this isn't my architecture. That's the uh, yeah. I'll share that. Oh, this is the video. I can. Uh, oh, it's the video. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Just this show the, that picture because I think that's really cool in terms of how you built it. Yeah. This this is basically just showing how Signal Wire works. Yeah. And, and and what I built was a a voice uh, AI agent yeah. using their their very great tool tooling mm -hmm. uh, and here here it is here's here's actually what i built um i didn't get it to as many features as i wanted because it was a hackathon and i tried to get in there and do it quickly yeah um, and i was i was working while traveling uh, but it was so much fun to play with uh there's so many cool uh capabilities yeah. and what i did is I, I built an uh an ai agent and i basically just created a prompt and I, uh the prompt is is all you have to do to to give it the personality of the bot you want, yeah. and then then I came through here and I uh, added the skills and I wanted I wanted to be like a counselor. I wanted to be act like a counselor. Yeah. Uh, and so I used techniques to cheer up the person, uh, an depressed person, and then you know the the conversation flow, you know, the step by step of what you you go through when you talk to a person. Mm -hmm. So you know, give them your name, make up a name for yourself, uh, ask how they're doing. Uh, find out find out how they're doing without directly asking yeah uh, and try and keep it conversational so and it worked really well i was amazed at how well it worked um yeah. and then uh but yeah and then that was the majority of it and I, I actually attempted to build it in the call flow builder as oh, well okay. yeah which um i didn't get done with this but i was i was hoping to figure out how to get this working but i didn't quite get through all that uh 
my my goal was to have the the call handled yeah answer the call start recording the call mm -hmm. uh, and then trigger the ai agent yeah and then at the end send a summary to uh someone or yeah. if someone was the, the idea of my bot was if if they're lonely and they need a human to reach out then send out an sms exactly. that was the idea yeah so because in the elderly uh a lot of times the they have no one to talk to and most of the time so i know my dad yeah. will uh call people on the phone all day long just to talk and then but if if they were able to talk to this lonely bot and yeah. then at the end it realizes that hey he's not feeling the best right now maybe you yeah. should reach out exactly. it would send me a text and let me know so yeah. that i can reach out exactly because we're all busy and we you know we, we're aware of those issues with family but sometimes <laughs> you just need that nudge in terms of just making that call you know at the right time you know <laughs> I, you know, I thought it was you know, very powerful. And again, a great example of uh, using uh, the uh, signal wire, you know, AI gateway. Now, I was wondering, what were some of your experiences in building this on the resources that uh, signal wire provided? Like I showed just now, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, yeah. I, I was able just to to prompt it, like you would do, like a Chat GPT or. Uh, things like that. I mean, it's it's so simple to use. Um, I, I the drag and drop builder that they have is is great. Um, one thing I'd like to see that builder do is actually let you export the SWML, uh, whatever the markup language is. That'd be great to be able to do because I think yeah. uh, almost everything run, seems to run on SWML on there. And if if you could uh, take an input SWML and visualize it, that would make it much easier as a developer to be able to to draw out what you're thinking and your flow. Um, and that that's that's one of the things that I experienced during it. I was trying to figure out how do I, how does this flow? How does it work internally? Right. I was trying to figure those things out. That would have been real nice. Uh, but man, I love the tools, and it's just so easy. I mean, it was neat. Um, and you can export that swimmel. You just have to go, uh, I can show you how it's not exposed, but you go and say you have a swimmel bin, you get the UUID of your call flow and you just go relay dash bin slash the UUID of that call flow and it'll output the swimmel for you. Cool. That's awesome. So it, it is there. <laughs> it is there. And, and, and we, just, don't have it was. we don't have ingestion of one because there's a lot of little tags they add to what the call flow builder does to keep states and where things are supposed to be connected. Mm -hmm. uh, so that there's there's some hidden things in that swimmel. You'll you'll see it when you export one, but definitely uh, that that feature is there. It's just not documented. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's cool. I, I couldn't figure it out yet. So I mean, but honestly, I um, just the ability to be able to build a conversational bot. I love the step by step piece. They give it the personality and then have the steps. It's it works. The agents are really cool. Um, I definitely recommend people using them. I. I uh, I, I can't wait to see what you do with this uh, as you go forward because it's it's still pretty early, right, Brian? Or yeah, and and there is a stack of features uh, that aren't even exposed in that UI. If you were to develop with just raw Swimmel today, you get way more advanced stuff. And our V3 UI coming out will expand upon that and be uh, phenomenal. It'll add all the new features, the pronunciations, the, the languages. So if you have an you know one of the TTS engines that's mispronouncing a name you can put a tweak in there to make it pronounce it right. Cool. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, especially with proper nouns. So that's really yeah. cool. Uh, and what, what, another question I had is what, as well was uh, around uh, languages. I mean, because the way you guys utilize multiple uh, types of uh, carrier, you can use different uh, services, cloud services for your voice pronunciations. Mm -hmm. Like you had 11, uh, 11 labs, you had... Uh, Poly, you had Google, all those. Uh, does that increase the number of languages you guys are going to support? Because I think that's often a problem. Uh, yeah. Okay. So yes, it does do that. We also support all the DeepGram voices and the OpenAI voices. It's just not in our documentation yet. Those are still in kind of a quasi rollout, but you can use those as well. The additional thing you have to think about is you can have a multilingual bot as well that speaks multiple languages. I highly recommend two to three being the max. Um, I had my bot when I was testing the multilingual stuff 
with multiple languages, like eight or nine, it gets, it gets the, the, what you'll find out is you can start talking to it and say Spanish and it'll switch to Spanish to match you. Uh, things like that. Yeah. But it gets tricky because say in, the English recognizer is usually what we lead with. And due to the fact of the wide nature of that recognize recognizers, uh, corpus of, of you know information yeah. it has these biases built in to be able to understand basics of other languages so it but, but the problem becomes now when you're in spanish it those models don't have that bias to switch back to english as easily so like i can switch to hindi mm -hmm. uh, and not come back because the hindi model does not have the okay, that that little bit of bias to help it understand an english word uh, same thing with telugu and some of the other ones but we, 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 it'll do it all. It'll just switch and start speaking to you in your native language. Cool. What are some of the other hidden features that will be coming out soon? Well, we have a new transparent barge that's in testing right now. It lowers the turnaround and endpointing down to crazy. Like you, you might have to add delay. Uh, oh. So wow. it, it is one. It is into that realm of of things we're testing right now. Uh, we've had a few instances since we use this at SignalWire to answer our phone. Mm -hmm. We've we've grokked a lot of information about interactions that our customers have had with it. Gotcha. Uh, for example, if a customer keeps barging over and over and over again and the AI never gets to speak, what it does with transparent barge is it rolls all that up into one, deletes all the AI responses and feeds it back into the LLM, gets you a more concise, consistent response to all three things the user said. Gotcha. Interesting. That was, that's really cool. I mean, so, rather than the last one that it basically pulled. yeah it, it'll pull it all together and answer everything and, and mm -hmm. take care of the, the caller and that's that's a, a setting you have to turn on now but we want to get that to be our default gotcha uh, sometime in the next month excellent excellent nope that's great to know and one of we, the, we, go for it. We, we've done some improvements as well in our signal our ai gateway for functions mm -hmm. uh so you know that's something else that we're gonna our v3 ui will actually expand upon that as well Excellent. Mike, you going to say something? Yeah, I was going to say um, one thing that I wanted to do with OnlyBot was uh, I wanted to be able to clone my voice because, you know, for, for the elderly that they get used to a voice that uh, that they know. So yeah. if, if I could create, you know, a, a loved one for someone that may have a uh, mental impairment or something like that, maybe like a dementia or something like that. It would be really cool if we could clone a voice of, of someone or even someone that's passed that mm -hmm. you could, you could uh, then use with only bot to uh, give them someone to talk to, give them a loved one to talk to, to make them feel more comfortable. And um, we will have, we will have that. We could do it today. I just have to have your voice ID uh, and we import it into our account. And then you use that ID when you specify the voice. And this is when you have to generate your swimmel yourself because the UI won't let you put that in yet. But that is on our radar. We've done it already for customers that want to use a voice they've generated or cloned mm -hmm. uh, because of branding. Because I've also yeah. talked about branding is important. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's part of that whole keeping your brand yep. uh, together. Interesting. Yeah, that's powerful. Cool. And then one thing that you know, we, when we, before we started uh, this podcast is you raising, um, you know, how your uh, poor dad was scammed uh, on, uh, was it robocalling that uh, got Yeah, him? she, uh, by movers, she was, she oh, uh, had, she was moving from. Oh, actually, uh, <laughs> yeah, Brian and Mike, so please share both your stories because we need to understand how pervasive this is because I don't think people appreciate how many elderly relatives are, you know, losing Life savings, losing significant cash because of all the scams taking place over carriers' networks. Yes. So please, Brian, um, go first and then Mike. But, but Abby was getting scammed by movers, so she decided we, we would create Lynette, and Lynette would play the role of the the, the target. Yeah. And she got multiple calls. There was one call, and this poor guy was a legit person. She went through the entire inventory of the apartment for the mover is all hallucinated. Yeah. Seven minutes in, he asked if it was AI. And she says, yes, I'm an AI agent powered by signal wire. What else do we need to do? And they continued to do inventory for three more minutes. So but we're wow. going to create net 2.0 uh, sometime before ClueCon. And we're going to demonstrate a, an even better version of that. Excellent. Uh, 
but what what come out of that is we could now create Lynette, give her your real inventory and let her go talk to all the movers. Yeah. And then give you a summary. Yeah, that's powerful. That's really good. That's an excellent use case. And Mike? Yeah, I was saying that uh, I know that, uh, but actually, actually, both my parents have been hit by phone scammers. So wow. my mother, my mother got hit by a uh, like a, a gift card type of scandal where they try and call her and say, "Oh, you owe, uh, yeah, you signed up for this a car, this account, and you're going to be charged five hundred dollars. Uh, you're going to need to, you, you made a mistake, and so they were going, they're asking her to sign into her bank account with her live." And yeah. she had, th then they blank her screen out and started to go into her her bank yeah. account. Yeah. And uh, and on the phone, she, and she realized something was wrong and called me. Luckily, and I yeah. uh, had her shut it down. But that's she was a, a few seconds away from losing access yeah. to her checking account. Yeah. And and my dad had a similar issue where uh, a romance scam a scammer tried to get uh yeah. to uh win him over and she did and oh. you know he had a he had a online relationship talking to this woman that he thought was real mm -hmm. for for a year or two wow and she she actually had us stop talking to the family so yes. she, she she convinced him to stop talking to us yeah uh, and that we were bad and all this stuff it's it's yeah. terrible the stuff they'll do yeah and then then took money from him and all sorts of stuff so it's exactly yeah. It's definitely bad. Oh, yeah. And that person uh, is mostly part. Oh, Johnny, you're going to say something? I mean, obviously, it's the reason why I'm on the podcast. It's the reason why we started Truth and Telecoms is what, what we've done. And look, you guys are super geeks and, 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 yeah, over here. And, you know, the funniest thing is people, you can, you can like I keep saying it, you can they just replace a human kidney with a pig's kidney, but you can't stop spam, can't stop Robocorn. More full stop they can. We, we found multiple solutions, and that's our biggest screen. What's happening to the elderly and, and our kids, and <laughs> it's just staggering. So if you, that's been our mission. I mean, they just had a meeting yesterday, the uh, CTIA, FCC, with all the usual suspects, and it's just criminal, and it's, it's not right. And, and we hope to have tens of millions of Americans screaming because once they realize that the mobile operators are profiting off of this, yes, and – I think that's the main story. So yeah, I just exactly. wanted to chime in because it's uh, these stories are important, yeah. and and what happened to to both of you is important. And yeah. Signal Wire, I love what you guys are doing over there. Just just um, you know, come up with a solution. Yep. Well, <laughs> Brian was describing. I'm sure they could. <laughs> exactly. No, Brian was sharing just now on what they're doing because and it's very simple. The scams pay for all the spam. You know, whether it's SMS or robocalling, that goes into the carriers. The carriers then basically uh, pay you know, share buybacks or big dividends, and it goes into investors. So it's basically people's you know, retirement savings, you know, <clears throat> basically from their accounts, is just being basically filtered you know, through a couple of steps, but into basically uh, investors. So you know, it, it's something that has to stop. Um, I, I do have to commend one feature Apple added to the iPhone is the silence unknown callers feature, which I run 100% like that. If you're not in my phone book, you're going to leave me a voicemail. I'm not going to accept. I do not yep. get any robocalls anymore. If you're not in my phone book, I don't get calls from you. Yep. Same thing. I basically don't answer. If it's not in my contact list, don't answer <clears throat> it. It goes through to voicemail. But okay. it, it, it's like it's the crapification of the PSTN where, you know, it, it's just you know, somebody that I know well that's just calling me, you know, because we maybe it's we've always, you know, because we've chatted on text or messaging or something. And they've so rarely called me that I've never needed to add them as a contact. And that's you know, just one of many examples. But anyway, I would just like to congratulate Mike for excellent hack again. Uh, I'm so pleased we were able to get you a ticket to be able to go around Enterprise Connect and see all the presentations. And again, thank you, Brian, for your excellent uh, resources. And uh, I wish you all a great weekend. Thank you so much for taking part.